Welcome back for another episode of Tattoos and Toddlers, y'all. I have another guest on. You've probably heard her voice before, but I brought her back on for a special topic today, and I really wanted to kind of go over some of the things that she's had her hands in and part of her life story. I'm super excited to bring back Allison. <laughs> Hand Thank clap. Thank you so much, Jen. Clap. So good to be back. <laughs> Yeah, it was not that long ago that we spoke and we were we were heavily diving into all different things, family related, kids related, business related. And specifically, I wanted to revisit one of your businesses, which I find super fascinating, but it also has a lot to do with um, grieving and loss and memorialization of people that we love or sometimes probably pets that we've loved or, you know, all these different kinds of things that we walk through in this life where we lose people and pets and, and, and businesses. Sometimes we lose businesses in our lives too. Um, I kind of want to jump right into this topic of your business here and kind of maybe give me a backstory of introduce yourself again, who you are, and then sp this specific business. Okay. So, um, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for putting up with me again. Uh, <laughs> my name is Alison Ockenden and I am, uh, today I am the owner of today, tomorrow, and always. Um, now, to kind of tell you where Today, Tomorrow and Always kind of came from, I need to tell you about the most horrendous uh, moment of my life. Um, so I fell in love with a man that lived in Canada. Um, for those that don't recognise my accent, I'm Australian. Um, I'm sitting here in New South Wales, um, near Newcastle, if you'd like to look that up on a map. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I, I had, had visited him. We were planning on being married and having children. Um, and he suddenly got ill. Um, he had he was a dialysis patient, so we we knew that. Um, but he was actually the healthiest he had been um, in his entire life. And um, I won't go into all of the details about how it happened, but he passed away. Um, I I did manage to make it there and hold his hand as he took his last breath. Um, but yeah, he. He, instead of just saying, look, I don't want to be with you anymore, he very rudely died. Um, <laughs> um, look, I joke about it because, you know, th there are some things in life that you've just got to, you know, you've got to put that spin on, otherwise it drives you mad. Um, but so today, to and always, to give you an idea of the type of man Manny was, um, if you can all think back to that moment when you are a teenager and you got your first boyfriend, your first crush, and you do the, no, you hang up first. <laughs> no, you hang up first. You're on the phone you for hours. <laughs> yeah, you remember that, right? So t TTA, or Today, Tomorrow, and Always, was our version of that. It was the most immature, stupid, you know, he used to tell me, you know, I'll love you today, tomorrow, and always. And, Aww. you know, I will love you until I took until I take my last breath. And oh, my gosh. He, he, did. Um, he was actually still trying to propose uh, in person. Um, while intubated and stuck to a bed with tubes everywhere using some form of sign language that he created in the moment, um, I ended up telling him to shut up because um, I, I already had my ring on. Um, and, you know, like, dude, you know, let's, let's focus on surviving this. Then we can talk about, you know, what flowers you want to use, you know. Um, but he was an incredible, incredible man. And at the time that he passed away, I didn't know anything about this industry. Yeah. It was probably about 18 months later um, that I, I found it. Uh, and I actually found it through breast milk, the breast milk side of things, you know, for, for women that have reached that goal that they set for themselves and wanted that trophy to say, look, you know, I, I did it. I, I reached the goal that, that I set for myself. But um, as my and I, I do make that I do use breast milk, um, but what I'm really passionate about is making sure that no other family like mine um, has nothing to hold on to after a loved one passes. If we had known about this, I would have shaved that guy's head before we, um, you know, we put him in his in his section of the wall in the mausoleum. But I didn't know. Um, he left behind a daughter that now has to get married without her best friend. And they were really, really close. And that just doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right with me that there are so many daughters out in the world that are going to have to get married without their dad walking them down the aisle. Mm -hmm. So I kind of made it a mission of mine to fix that. Um, so when it comes to brides, 
we use either the hair or ashes of dad if possible. Um, we create a crystal that is wrapped around her bouquet, which is held in front of her, meaning that dad guides her down the aisle, oh. which is not the same as having him walk side by side, but it's a plan B and it really does allow a physical, literal part of him to be there with her. Um, and I do that for all family members. So, you know, if you've lost your grandmother, if you've lost um, a sibling, um, God forbid you've lost a child that you want to be part of that. I've made wedding bands using the ashes of um, a deceased baby um, because they wanted that baby to be a part of that ceremony. Their living children were obviously there and, and yeah. the photos. Um, and look, some people listening to this might think, oh, my God, that's so gross and so weird. And you know what? I respect that. I have, I, I don't judge people because they think what I do is creepy. Um, I'm just not for you. And that's totally fine. Um, but for those people that have lost a child, have lost um, a pet, like you said, or a loved one, that just want to be able to hold on to something that really connects them to that, that person or that loved one, um, in those moments of grief, that's that's where I come in. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. Okay, let's let's lighten the mood a little bit. Yeah. I, I feel like we got real deep real quick. Um, I also do, like I said, I do um, the breast milk stuff, you know, to celebrate. I mean, look, let's face it, ladies, any man <laughs> that climbs, you know, the tallest mountain is going to, you know, take a selfie or take a rock or something like, look what I did. You know, I achieved this. And you know what? Sometimes breastfeeding can be just as hard as climbing Mount Everest. You deserve a trophy for that. You deserve something to say, <laughs> hey, look, look what I did. This was hard. Um, you know, I also do, like I've used sand from a wedding mm -hmm. um, and a proposal that we then turn into either, you know, their initials for the engagement or the Mr. and Mrs. So that they actually have the ground they were standing on when they said their I do's as a, a keepsake forever you know this is literally what we were standing on you know we took a step back scooped some up and sent it to Allison um you know I've used flowers from overhanging trees from when they they said there I do there are so many other things that I can do if you're grossed out by the DNA side um, <laughs> because it, it yeah. it's not for everyone it's and nothing but respect for that um but that that is where my passion lies because of my story and because of, of why Today Tomorrow Always was born. So I actually launched the business on the third anniversary of Manny's passing because those first two years on that day, I'm not going to swear, but let's just say they were not pleasant. <laughs> just, just fill in the blanks there. Um, for anyone that has lost someone, you know that that day just becomes this cesspool of depression it really does because you're being reminded oh my god this is this was the last day I I got to tell them I love them I got to touch them I got to all of those things so I wanted to change that I wanted to celebrate him instead of being this miserable sack of tears yeah. and snot um so now every year we celebrate we celebrate the fact that even in death he is still in our life every day. Now, don't get me wrong. For the first year of this business, every time I would have to explain, like for, for anyone in business, um, yeah. you would know exactly what I, I mean when I say your why. For those that aren't yeah. um, in business to, to really be able to find the people that you can help the most, you've got to figure out why, why you're in business, why you want to serve people, you know, all of that. And for me, it was very clear. I wanted to help families like mine that and, and make sure that they never you know, were left empty handed. So that was really easy. Um, but it now, you know, kind of turned into more than that. And it was, you know, it, it just kind of evolved into, into this bigger thing. But, you know, I, I, I really love this business. I love being able to help people. Um, it's not an easy thing to do for anyone that's thinking, oh my God, I would love to do that. Look, by all means, get in touch with me and we can chat. But having a mum in tears as she's yeah. handing you her baby's ashes yeah, or her baby's hair or the embryos that were left from the cycle that she used to have her living children. 
that can be really hard. That can be really um, like take an emotional toll because, you know, you feel that you feel the trust that, you know, is being put into you, you know, to hand them over. Um, but the the look on their face when you hand it back and they have this ring or they have a bead or they have, you know, something to display in their home among their family photos, that outweighs any of the negative. I really love that we could talk about this today because, as you know, I'm a wedding photographer, so I am constantly around events that are missing their loved ones. And I've seen a variety of ways that people express their memorials or express the love for those of they've lost. Mm. And it's very, I don't, I'm not going to say it's rare, but I just very rarely hear about people that actually have specific jewelry or accessories or um, things that are made from the DNA aspect. But I love the fact that all of these couples they really take into consideration that little piece of their family member or their a sibling, a father, a mother, uh, you know, anything that could be there with them for their day. I love the fact that you were talking about crystals that they're wrapped around the bouquet. And mm -hmm. I've had people do, you know, like cameo charms of photos and they strap that mm -hmm. onto the bouquet and carry that with them. I've had people have a, a photographic image um, placed inside of their outfit to have them yeah. close to their heart. And I think about how fun jewelry can be when you get into that mode of memorialization. Now, just to tell you a personal story from my side, my grandma, Bobby, I think she passed a couple of years ago now. So my... I think my aunt had found a place that we could get teddy bears made from her clothing. Now I know it's not the, it's not the exact same as the DNA aspect, but the mm. fact that we could take something that she owned and wore and was hanging in her closet and make a cute teddy bear out of it. Yeah. We had the whole family had teddy bears made. It was so special because yeah. we remember that our grandma was very flashy in the way she dressed and she had, she had um, clip on earrings and short, sassy hair. And I have uh, my mine and my daughter's bears in the in the bedroom over there. So I can always look at it and say, you know what? That was my grandma's shirt or this is my grandma's, you know, uh, they made a miniature vest for the bear to wear, you know, she was so cute, like little jumpers and little vests and just little things, little details that that remind you of her. But yeah. it's not like you know, it's, it's so different than when you're taking a, a, a genetic component and mixing that in, which I just find that fascinating and wonderful, believe it or not, as weird as it sounds, I think it's beautiful just because I've seen what people can do with just the newer technologies or the older technologies that we bring back to make things right. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I too have heard of people making bears and things like that. And I think it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, you know, some people, uh, like I've had clients who have said, look, I've got ashes. I'm not going to open them. I don't want to know what they look yes. like. I, I don't want to. And they just give me the whole container. Mm -hmm. um, but they say, you know, I'm having, you know, this done. While you're there, could you please, you know, separate some so that I can just, and put it in an envelope. I don't want to see it. You know, so that I can then pass it on to the next person to place some ashes inside their teddy bear or in whatever else they're, they're having done. And I don't mind doing that because it's still giving people that that feeling of healing, that feeling of something to touch through the grief process. It's everyone grieves differently. So yes. it's not a yeah. case of, I, you know, I, I know when in, in my experience, it was a case of, look, it's been six months now. Um, you know, he would want you to be happy. He would want you to go date. He would want you to find someone. Um, I I still felt like I was cheating until mm. like six, seven years later. Um, and that was just me, you know, it, it, I, I, there's no way I could have sped that up. It just, it was what it was. Um, but yeah, I, I completely agree. It's, and when it comes to that, I've had people come to me and say, Oh my God, I, I wish I'd known. And that's the phrase that we're going to erase from the world yeah. is I wish I knew you existed when, because I hear that so often and I said it, I said, I wish I knew this existed when he died. You know, it, it's one, it's that phrase that both triggers me and, you know, kind of 
inspires me as well because I don't want anyone to ever say that. I don't want to hear that anymore. I want to hear, thank God I knew you existed when this happened. Thank God I thought I told my friend that, you know, that you were available and what you could do when this happened to them. Um, But I do, I use fabric. Um, I've used perfume for a bride. Um, Both the bride and groom's grandmothers had passed away and they were actually the people that raised the the two couple. Um, And so I used their perfume and she said that when she got them out of the box, she could still smell the perfume. Now, I think this was about three months before their wedding. So even if by the day that smell had dissipated, that um, that memory, you know, we've all got the the core memories that are attached to certain things. Every time she sees them now, she thinks back to I could smell them when I opened the box. Oh. Um, so that that's beautiful. Um, I have used fabric. Um, you know, everyone has that one thing that they think of when they think of that certain loved one. I know for me, my my dad, when he passes, it'll either be these disgusting, um, like, flannelette-type jackets. Yep, I have one for my grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dad, like, the 1980s called and they want their fashion back. Please give it back to them, please. Um, or it'll be something to do with the uh, Newcastle Knights NRL football team because he's a bit obsessed. Um, but... You know, for for our family, that's what we we think of when we think of him. Yes. Um, and you know, it just it's beautiful. You know, like I said, for those that that don't want the DNA but want something, you know, reach out, have a look at the website. You know, there's some options on there. Um, I guarantee you, there's something that we can do, whether you have DNA or whether you don't. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't have to be something that you wear. I, I've heard of brides having beads made that they they pin to the inside of their dress again so that it was touching their skin yeah. and then put it on a bracelet afterwards and, you know, and kept them close that way. Um, there's just so many things that we can do to incorporate your loved ones, you know, and your pets. I've made a wedding band um, with ashes of a dog recently um, because it was a dog that a gentleman had for um, emotional and mental health support yes. um, throughout his life. Yeah. Um, and that dog passed away only a few weeks before his wedding. Um, and it was really hard. So his bride-to-be actually reached out to me and said, is there any way you can make this in time? Um, and, of course, I, I, you know, did everything, like express shipping, um, you know, from my suppliers and, and we got it done and, and got it made because, you know, it's, I'm all about memories. Yeah. I'm all about them. Um, Whether, you know, it's this kind of memory um, and turning it into something physical that you can touch or, um, sorry, I was going to sneeze, Um, (laughs) or whether it's, um, you know, any kind of memory um, and keeping them alive along the way because, unfortunately, at some point, that's all we're going to have left of people. Um, And it, yeah. We, we want to have them. We want to have them there so that during those times we can just. It's just it just helps us bring back those memories of what, you know, our minds as, as long as they're working and bringing those memories back to us and, and just, it brings back feelings hopefully good ones, you know, like I know a lot of us are going to, we're going to walk through a lot of bad feelings and a lot of missing our people or Mm -hmm. frustrated or anger, anything, any, any emotion is not off the, off the topic there, but Mm -hmm. it's like, I'm as a photographer, it's the same for me in any photograph that I look at and I touch and I feel and pick it up and I look at that saying oh my gosh that was me or oh my gosh that's my daughter or this is my family and there's something about touching and having something with you you. Mm -hmm. and I don't you know I I like to think about that legacy moment right where the legacies are passed down the heirlooms um so many different creatives like just come up with so many different ideas and I love that I love that you're doing this because it, it helps me think about like, what, what would I want to do? I, I, th- I kind of regret not getting something done with my 16 year old cat on Valentine's day. And had I thought about it, even a paw print as an art piece would have been great, yeah. but I didn't think about that. 
you don't like when you're in the middle of it, you just don't think about it. And you're like, you're just, you know, for me, I was ready to just let her go and let's just be done. And I'm going to cremate her with all the other animals. And then we're, we're good. Yeah. And then I thought to myself, well, crap, I should have gotten like a cute little paw print because it would have made me happy. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Something for my baby besides just a photo of her, which I do have some cute photos of her all shaved and cute. So it's like, you know, one of those things, but I know we've talked about, you know, the miscarriages or or infant loss too, where even if I would have had a small photograph of this scan for me would have been wonderful to have as a memento and, you know, having a photograph turned into a piece of art would have been great too. Like, um, but all I have is my heart and my head for those moments. (laughs) Yeah. And, some and tattoos. People, um, yeah, and the tattoos. Of and the tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, some people, um, when they have that um, experience, that pregnancy loss in those early stages, um, we have um, little clay babies that I make up to about nine or ten weeks to scale. Mm. So this afternoon I'm actually making one of our uh, Mother Goddess pieces, which is a pregnant bust. And inside the belly, we put whatever week of gestation you either lost your baby or the week that you found out that you were pregnant as a memento. You know, you were this tiny when you started making me throw up everything I put in my mouth. Um, You know, know, it it can be that kind of thing. Um, But look, I've had, um, I've met some incredible people through this business. Um, I've had cancer patients that were losing their hair. Yeah. And have said, you know, I would love to have my own hair put into something that this was the before me, you know, this was mm-hmm. the, this was the goodbye to the the healthy version of, of what my hair used to look like, because, you know, it, it isn't a death of that, um, you know, all of your hair falls out in a lot of cases, and then it's completely new and completely fresh um, when it does start to come back in. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a cancer patient who had her portal. Um, she named it Rosie, um, and she wanted me to put that in. Um, so I, <laughs> I make little pregnancy announcement things, you know, with an initial or with a heart, and we put in the pregnancy test. We put in, um, you know, whatever other little bits and pieces that you would like. And she's like, uh, I, I want to do something with it because it kept me alive for so many years, but I don't know what to do. And I said, well, how about we do a birth announcement, but in a death way, you know, like it's, mm. it's thanking, you know, um, Rosie for all of the the things that she gave you. And instead of saying, um, you know, was born on this day, you know, she was alive. She kept me alive for how many days? Um, you know, there were this many sessions. There were um, all of her statistics, just like we would do with a newborn, but yeah. that relate to her and and what she did for you and she's like oh my god that's sick and twisted I love it (laughs) Um, (laughs) it's something we don't we don't naturally gravitate towards that right like I feel like a friend of mine has been looking for various ways to express grief and death and, and things like that which I think is it's very interesting that we all look at it differently and we all process it differently some of us are thinking about it before we even get there some of us know that it's going to happen at any time um but i you know i guess what i really want to say with this with this talk today is that we all have an opportunity today to just sit down and say you know is there something that in my life that i need to memorialize or if i want to memorialize it can i take the time to you know well you can obviously they can reach out to you allison but like Also leaving the broader spectrum of when we're talking about loss and and having little keepsakes, I think it's super awesome to just let yourself think about it or Mm. don't do it at all. Like you have several different things you could do. You could just think about it. Maybe something fits your personality or your life. Um, And then sometimes, like like I said, I didn't do anything for my cat. I kind of wish I would have, but I'm okay knowing that she lived here with us for 16 years and, you know, but I have my Gigi bears for my grandma and that idea came from another idea previously losing my grandpa where my, my grandma had some stuff um, made with his clothing, but it was just a standard bear with his clothing made into a miniature shirt. I mean, I thought that was really clever. 
Yes. And, you know, it was, it, it was just so many different ways that we can do this. So as we start to round out our talk today, I know it's gone by so quickly, but is there anything else that we want to leave chat. somebody with today <laughs> as they're thinking about, you know, making these keepsakes or having these keepsakes? Like I, it, it just sounds like there's no idea off the table when it comes no. to memorializing our lives. So no. let's, let's kind of add that in as we start to round out our conversation. Yeah. Look, if before we do wrap up, I need to express the importance of having these conversations. Yes. Death is something that we do not like to talk about. It's uncomfortable. And, and I get that. But the amount of families that have come to me and said, my brother and sister, we really want rings made um, from our dad's or our mum's, you know, ashes or hair. And then there's a third sibling that uh, refuses. No, because he wouldn't or she wouldn't want to be split up. She would want all of her ashes together. She would want all of her hair together. Have these conversations yeah. because I promise you that your family members knowing that you're okay with being separated after death will make that so much easier for them should they choose to go down this road. Um, should they choose to split your ashes between them to do with what they choose, just have the conversations. It's so important. Um but yeah, there's, I, I, look, I think that's the biggest tip, right, is, is, is to talk about. Um, yeah, it's, like I said, it's not for everyone. Um, there are so many ways that you can, you know, leave that legacy and it doesn't have to be, you know, in this way. But this is a really beautiful way for your loved ones to be able to still touch you and hold on to you um in a way that isn't creepy it isn't weird the way that I make my pieces is no one else would know what's in there unless you told them yeah and I do that on purpose because I don't want you to feel anything but um what's the word content I think um you know when when you look at these so yeah if you if you have an idea nothing's out of the realm contact me, send me an email and we'll chat and we'll see if it's possible. Um, you know, I'm happy. To, I'm always looking to to stretch, you know, what I'm able to do and, and push the limits um, because I think it's one of those things that is extremely personal. Um, whatever you have that reminds you of that person, you know, if it's something out of the ordinary, let's let's chat and let's try it. Absolutely. As my little alarm went off for our original time, I was going to prepare for our talk today. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't hear that. I was laughing. No, I was like, I oh my God. <laughs> no, but you're very prepared because you're already here. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wow, I'm early. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for coming to uh, listen out, listen here on this unique episode of Tattoos and Toddlers where it, you know, it's like you said, I want to echo the conversation part because that's what podcasts are all about. It's literally talking about things that maybe we don't normally talk about on an everyday basis. This is not a subject that comes up every day for me, but I am so glad that we could sit here and talk about it because if you haven't discovered the art of loss, then, you know, in the next week or two, you could lose somebody close to you and then you're going to be wondering what in the world you need to do with your your mementos from them. So Allison has given us some ideas. I know that I have different ways that I grieve as well, but just know that having the conversations and, and letting options come out, I think is a great idea. And I think it's a great um, way to keep connected to those that you've loved. And you know, I mean, because some of us have loved hard, man, we've loved hard and we've had to let go hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we have. So, all right. Well, as we're wrapping this up, I just want to thank you, Allison, for coming out again. And I really, really look forward to, to um, talking more with you in the future as we do more projects together, hopefully. <laughs> yes. Yes. A hundred percent. All right. So everybody stay tuned for the next episode of Tattoos and Toddlers. And uh, who knows who's on next? You'll just have to wait and see. I'll talk to you soon.